Alrighty guys, welcome back to another Opera Omnia video where we're going to be talking about Braska, the brand new character dropping to Global Default for the month of July. Not only that, we also have Jekt, who shall be receiving his rework, his C90 and Force Enhancements. And of course, we do have Ignis that will be a part of the two banners. Uh, he shall be receiving only his Force Enhancements, but his LD weapons shall be re-ran. Now, there are going to be two banners that are going to be dropping with the release of Braska. Uh, for those who may not know, uh, Jex BT weapon shall be featured on one of the banners, and the other one with Braska will have Kane's BT as a featured BT for uh, for that banner. But uh, any of these characters worth chasing for in the upcoming banner? Well, we're going to be talking about Braska. I'm going to give my pros and cons on him for those who are curious about him and whether or not you should pull for him or if he's worth skipping for. Uh, Jekt, I will go over his rework and whatnot. And then Ignis, I will briefly mention uh, at least like one of the biggest pros about him. So we're going to be talking about all of that in this video. And I'm going to let you guys know whether or not it is worth chasing for in the upcoming banner so let me know down in the comments section below what your plans are going to be for any of these three characters whether you're going to be pulling or skipping let me know down in the comment section below and with that being said let's go ahead and jump right into it so we'll first start off with jacked with his skill one that turns into a four hits fire melee brave plus an hp attack four times the plus version gains a small increase in brave potency the buff, Final Resolve, adds a self 20% Brave damage up and a 10% HP damage up. Now his LD now resets all targets break status after the second HP attack and now deals full HP damage. With his C90, his EX ability turns into a 2 hit melee Brave plus an HP attack 8 times that grants free ability use on his next turn. His C65 got extended to 4 turns and adds a 30% attack up and a 30% brave damage cap up. Now for Braska, his skill 1 party HP heals by 80% of the max HP and you have to have his 15 CP equipped or at least the passive uh, equipped on Braska to get that 80% if not you are going to get a lower percentage. It then increases party brave gain to 80% of max brave that has instant turn rate and doesn't increase the turn count. It grants the journey to save Spira buff for 6 turns which provides the party with a 30% attack up and max brave up. His skill 2 increases party brave gain by 50% and you need to have his 35 CP passive equipped if not you are going to get a lower percentage of the max brave and then deals a 4 hit AOE magic brave plus an AOE HP attack 3 times that deals split HP damage and increases brave by 20% of the total HP damage dealt after each HP attack. It grants the same buff from his skill 1 for 6 turns. Now his EX ability Increases Brave by 30%, then deals a 3-hit AoE Fire Magic Brave plus an AoE HP attack 3 times that deals full HP damage and increases Brave by 20% of the total HP damage dealt after each HP attack except for the last. It inflicts the Fire Resist Down debuff to all targets for 6 turns, increases EX Recast Gauge Speed by 20%, and grants him a free ability use on his next turn, excluding his LD and FR, of course. Uh, his Overdrive Overhead, which is granted at the start of the quest with EX weapon or passive equip, provides him with a 20% attack up and stolen Max Brave Overflow up and a 10% Max Brave up. At 5 stacks of his overhead, it fills his EX gauge and grants the plus version of his EX ability. Now, his stacks increase by 1 at the start of his turn and resets to 1 stack the following turn after being at 5 stacks. The plus version of his EX ability increases Brave by 50% of Max Brave and then deals a 3 hit AoE Fire Magic Brave plus an AoE HP attack 5 times that deals full HP damage and increases Brave by 20% of the total HP damage dealt after each HP attack except for the last. It inflicts the Fire Resist Down debuff to all targets for 6 turns after the first HP attack and grants a free ability use on his next turn. His EX reverts back to the regular version after use. 
His LD ability increases Brave by 30% of max Brave, then deals a 2 hit Fire Magic Brave plus an HP attack 4 times that deals 20% splash damage after each attack and increases Brave by 20% of the total HP damage dealt after each HP attack except for the last. It grants the buff Re Resolute Final Summoning for 12 turns and inflicts the Fire Resist Down debuff to target for 6 turns. It becomes the plus version when his overdrive overhead is at 5 stacks. Now, his LD buff provides him with a 20% fire enchant, a 10% HP damage up, a 20% party HP damage up, now totaling uh, 30%, a 30% party brave damage up, and a 20% stolen and gained max brave overflow up. Now, the plus version of his LD ability increases brave by 50%, of the max brave then deals a two hit fire magic brave plus an hp attack five times that increases brave by 50 percent of the total hp damage dealt after each hp attack except for the last and deals 20 percent splash damage after each hp attack it reverts back to the regular version after use his c65 lasts for seven turns and grants the party with a 30 percent attacker a 10 percent party stolen max brave overflow up and a 20 percent party brave damage cap up his fr ability with amedetalian as his partner increases party brave by 50 percent of max brave and party hp heal by 100 percent of max hp and then deals a six hit aoe fire magic brave plus an aoe hp attack three times that deals split HP damage to all targets. Now his FR conditions are as follows. So you will gain a 20% increase to the HP damage bonus whenever you are using a fire ability or basically as long as you are fire enchanted via cause or another one of your teammates, then you will increase it by 20%. And then you can also increase it by 15% uh, so long as your HP at, is at least 100% or higher. So like HP overflow does count towards the 15% uh, condition. And then finally, with his 7 star armor, it provides a self-granted brave gains up by 30% and a 10% max brave cap up. And if you limit break his armor at 3 out of 3, his armor will provide the following, a 10% party brave damage cap up and a 10% party max brave cap up. And then recommended passes for Braska will be his C50, which provides the party with a... 5% party attack up and max brave up and that is at, at 2 stars and attack 108. So is Braska and or Jack worth chasing for in the upcoming banner? So we're going to start off with Jack. Jack finally gets the rework that he, he has been needing for quite a while now with a lot of characters after his BT Plus release uh, getting better reworks and whatnot, having more HP dumps, etc, etc. Jack kind of fell a little bit off for a little bit, but now he is back. He has plenty of HP dumps to hit the enemy with, which is great, especially his EX having 8 HP dumps in total. That's pretty crazy. Now, one thing to note about Jack is that most of his skills, except for his LD and his BT, are single target attacks with splash damage. So, like, you know, if you're needing to shave multiple enemies, you only have two skills or two, ab two abilities uh, to be able to do that. But Jack, uh, with the splash damage that he does uh, with his skill 1, skill 2, and his EX, the X ability should be more than enough uh, to handle whenever going up against two or more enemies. So uh, when it comes to his BT effect though, his BT effect mainly focuses on increasing brave damage and also increasing the brave damage cap up and he actually increases it even further than that uh, whenever you are attacking a broken target. Now his BT effect does apply to the entire party so <clears throat> uh, his BT effect for those who may not know provides the party with attack up, brave regen, brave damage up and then brave damage cap up. He has no HP damage cap up for those who are wondering about that. So uh, you would have to pair him up uh, with a character like, like let's say, like Garnet or something um, that has HP damage cap up. So that way you can get uh, much higher damage output out of Jet. Because Jet can definitely hit hard. Don't get me wrong. He can really deal some very good numbers. If you pair him up uh, with some strong supports or just any other BT unit that is able to increase the HP damage cap up uh, for Jack, like Jack can actually dish out some pretty good numbers. And if you give him force enhancements, that's going to be even better. Now, when it comes to force enhancements, in my recommendation, if you're not going to be using Jack that much, I would at least give him like maybe... Uh, 
le force level 13s and that's about it but if you are definitely going to be using jack outside of this story event then i would personally recommend you give him a 30 out of 30 because you want to get the maximum damage output out of him and at the same time you want to also give him those passives that will help out uh in increasing the or helping to increase the hp damage bonus uh depending on which fr that you are pairing up with but but in my opinion though like if you if you're going to be using him in here and there then i would give him at least level 13 or maybe even level uh 23 so you can get all three passives to increase the uh, force gauge a little bit faster but if you are really 100 guaranteed that you are going to be using him uh, a very good amount then uh, i would definitely max him out at 30 out of 30 but overall though uh jack he's a he's a very solid character definitely got the upgrade that he finally needed so best believe like if you are gonna fully build him uh he's gonna be dishing out some very hefty damage but i don't blame people for holding off on jack especially because like the following banner after this uh shall be cam and paladin Cecil, which will be the next uh pair of bt units uh so i don't blame you one bit if you decide that you want to hold off until a later date to give him force enhancements or uh to pull for him in a future banner now, when it comes to Braska, he does have some pros, but he does have one big fat con that I am not a fan of, which is probably one of the reasons why I can see a lot of players not pulling for, and I'll get into it here in just a second. But Braska, uh, he does have some party orders that he provides. Uh, he does have his skill 1, which is able to increase the force gauge a little bit faster than his other skills, so he is technically a force gauge or uh, an FR charger. Um... At the same time, though, when it comes to his overhead, the fact that you have to build up his overhead, um, it's I'm not too crazy of a fan of uh, because of the fact that, like, you you know, if you are not at five stacks by the time you get to his turn, you're not going to have access to the plus version of his EX and his LD ability. And you do want the plus version of of those two skills because that's just going to be more hp dumps overall from those two abilities and you and you definitely want them now uh whenever you do get the plus versions of those two uh, those two abilities even after Braska loses his stacks and you have to build up his stacks again uh, Those plus versions stay there until you actually use them And if you were to use the plus version of his EX ability You still have access to the plus version of his LD ability, which is great So that way you will get the best versions out of either of the two just depending on which one you actually use first now his ex ability does provide free ability use so that is also going to help out when it comes to uh, building up the force gauge via his skill one which is a good thing and even while using it while his force ability is active now Let's talk about the fat con that I am not a fan of when it comes to Braska. So, if we take a look at Crow, who just got her FR weapon, we know that she is able to provide the party with her own elements to help her meet with her FR condition. But with Braska, Braska does not provide party fire enchant. So, and he is the only one that is able to meet his own condition. So, what that means is that you pretty much have to help him out uh, when it comes to, or you're gonna have to help out the entire party via call abilities, or actually having the character that does provide party fire enchant, so that that way everybody will meet that first condition which is why i am not a fan of Braska, is because of just that right there because like of course there are going to be uh, other units that that you will have to use call abilities or actually have the character on your team to help meet an elemental condition but like when it comes to Braska, like and especially with with a uh, crow who who is able to help out in meeting her own conditions and help out the party in in meeting said conditions um looking at Braska, it's kind of like where well, why did they decide to do that and then when you look at the banner the banner has ignis and ignis is able to provide party fire and chance so i'm just thinking to myself like was this kind of like a business move like what's the deal here so to me that I, i'm not too much of a fan of that because like depending on like the team comps that you got going on um you know 
it, it, it might not be an issue to some, but it might be an issue like later on down the line, especially if you are going to be pulling for Bosca and you're going to be using an using him as an FR charger, then like the fact that or just knowing that you are going to have to uh, provide uh, party fire enchant via call abilities just basically basically just takes up the call ability slot when you could be using it for something else. But of course, if you're not going to be using his FR condition and, and you you are going to just straight up using it as an FR charger, then you know that changes things completely. Then all you have to do is just basically uh, just build up the force gauge with uh, Braska, and then you could probably switch him out for like a friend unit or something like that. It just depends on like what's going on and whatnot. So like overall, though, in general, though, I mean, I'm gonna be pulling for him just because I have to meet a uh, a certain bet with a certain serial gaming. Uh, but uh, like if if it wasn't for that bet. Um, I myself would probably not be pulling for Bosca. Uh, at, at the most, I would probably throw some tickets at the banner, but that's about it. But I would not hardcore chase for his entire kit. So, uh, for any for uh, for those who are watching though, is he worth chasing for? In my opinion, if you already have. Uh, an FR charger, like, let's say Panella or Cryo or shoot, if you decide to pick Ignis, because Ignis is an FR charging unit, uh, then I would say you can easily pass up on him. I really don't think he is worth the chase. Uh, but if you are wanting an FR charger and if you feel comfortable enough that Braska would actually meet your needs, then uh, you know he he he's not a bad choice. But like uh, with the banner that is going to be coming up uh, after Braska, which is going to be the next BT units, which is going to be Cam and uh, Paladin and Cecil. Uh, I w I would probably hold off on that. But like again, if you're needing an F4 charger, I mean you have Braska, but you also have Ignis on the same banner as well. So it really just depends on what exactly you want. But I would probably hold off on Braska in my opinion. So uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below when it comes to uh, these two characters. If you're going to be pulling for them or not. And uh, with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.